Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with the representation theory of uh, SL2. So, first we will actually uh, define uh, some concrete uh, examples of uh, SL2 representations and then later we will see that uh, how to approach the representation theory of SL2 in a more abstract way. So, let us uh, uh, start with this uh, following uh, example. Okay. Uh, so, we have uh, this SL2. So, recall that uh, we will simply denote it by SL2 itself because uh, always our ground field uh, is assumed to be the complex numbers. So, this is uh, spanned by these three uh, elements Cx, Ch and uh, Cy. So, note that the commutator relation gives Xy is H hx is 2x and then hy is 2y. Okay. So, now uh, what one can do? One can actually take the space of homogeneous polynomials of degree m. Okay. So, take this uh, Sm. So, this is the space of uh, homogeneous polynomials of degree m. So, then it is clear that uh, this is indeed spanned by the following polynomials. Let us say the polynomials in the variable t and u. Okay. So, then this is spanned by t power i u power j such that i plus j is exactly equal to m and i j are greater than or equal to 0. Okay. They are non-negative integers so whose sum is m. So, if you want to write it very explicitly, so this is spanned by so u t power m t into u power m minus 1 t square u power m minus 2 and so on uh, t power m minus 1 u u power m. Okay. The sum of these monomials will be a ho homogeneous polynomial of degree m and the space of homogeneous polynomial of degree m is given by this. So, now you can easily uh, calculate the dimension. So, because uh, you can see that uh, there are actually starting from uh, if you consider only the power of u. So, sorry this is supposed to be m minus 1 and u m minus 2 u square. So, it starts from 0, 1 up to m. So, that means uh, we have m plus 1 vectors inside SM. So, the dimension of Sm is m plus 1. Okay. So, now what is the action of Sl2 on this uh, Sm? So, I can write down the formula. So, the x acts on given any p okay, for any p inside Sm. We have x acting on p is given by t times dou p divided by dou u and then the h acts on p given by t times dou p divided by dou t minus u dou p divided by dou u. Okay. And how the y acts? y acts on p given by u times dou p divided by dou t. Note that the action of h can be obtained from the action of y. So, we need to have that this is exactly y acting on p like x y acting on p minus y acting on x p. Okay. So, using this formula one can actually calculate uh, this formula that is not a problem. Okay. This formula can be obtained using this. So, now I will leave it to you to check, it is a routine exercise uh, to check that 
using this action we have the following formulas ok. This is check indeed this gives you SL2 action. So, this gives SL2 action. How to check this? So, basically you need to check that x h acting on p is same as x acting on y p minus y acting on x p. So, that is the first formula. The second one 2 x p should be exactly equal to h of x p minus x of h p. Okay. So, this corresponds to the bracket x y is equal to being h, this corresponds to the bracket h x being 2 x and similarly, so the, the one last one corresponds to h y being minus 2 y. So, that means minus 2 y p should be equal to h y p minus y h p. Okay. So, these formulas one can check uh, directly. So, this is a direct computation, direct computation. Okay. But what is interesting indeed uh, if we take for example, this particular uh, type of basis. Okay. So, so, we are taking some modified basis. Okay. So, then we have these following formulas using that basis. So, we take t power m and then m times t power m minus 1 u, then m choose 2 t power m minus 2 u square and so on then m times t times u power m minus 1 and then u power m minus 1. So, you take all these uh, elements there are m plus 1 elements. So, you know that uh, this is just a constant multiple of the earlier basis, the earlier basis is just uh, t power m etcetera u power m. Now, we have adjusted the constant so that it will become very clear how to write uh, the action of h x and r. Okay. So, now uh, you can actually directly check. So, on this basis we have the following action. Okay. So, the action is very explicit here. So, let us let me write down for example, I can actually uh, compute it for some particular case. Okay. I will leave it to you to check the remaining formula. Okay, if I take h, so let let us call them w naught etcetera w m. So, this you call it w naught, this is w 1 and so on, then this you call it w m. So, basically the youth power that the label that we are using. Then it is easy to check h w i is indeed m minus 2 i w i. Okay. So, and if you take for example, x w i, so that is going to be give me m minus i plus 1 w i minus 1 and uh, you just take w minus 1 to be 0 here because x w 0 is going to be 0 and similarly y w i that is given by i plus 1 w i plus 1. And again here we said w m plus 1 to be 0. Okay. So, these formulas again can be verified directly using, using the action of h x y on this uh, homogeneous polynomial. So, let me just verify the very first one I will leave it to you to check uh, remaining thing. Okay. So, what is the action of h? So, recall h is given by t dou p by dou t minus u dou p by dou u. Okay. So, let us recall h is p is t dou p by dou u minus sorry 
t dou p by dou t minus u dou p by dou u t u dou p by dou u. So, now for example, if you take some typical element uh, ith term, so how w i looks like? So, w i looks like m choose i, okay, m choose 0 is 1 and m choose 1 is 1. So, remaining things are m choose i and then t power m minus i, t power m minus i, u power i. So, this is the typical term. So, now if you compute this, you can see that dou w i divided by dou t is going to be m choose i, uh, m minus i, t power m minus i, u i. So, then you are going to multiply by t. So, then you, the power will be increased. Then you want to subtract, okay. This is the action of h on w i, that is what we are computing. Then we want to subtract u dou p by dou u. So, that is going to be minus again m choose i. So, i times t power m minus i. So, u power i minus 1 will be there. So, that is going to give me, so yeah, m power i, so this plus 1 is not there because we are differentiating. So, this is t power m minus i u power i and then here again m minus i u power i. So, now this is gives me h w i equal to m choose i you take it out and then this is m minus i minus 2 times t power m minus i u power i. So, that is exactly m minus 2 i which is h w i times w i. So, this is what we wanted. Okay. So, if we take uh, this h w i which acts on this uh, w i as m minus 2 i w i. So, uh, from this you can see that uh, entire action of S L 2 how it is acting. Okay. So, these formulas are very important. So, we will actually make some important observations using this formula. Okay. So, it, these formulas are easy to check, they are just plain computation that is what I did here for H action. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check uh, what is this. So, let me just recall these formulas and then let us make some observation using this. So, H W i is given by m minus 2 i w i. So, that means each w i is an eigenvector for h. Okay. So, this implies w i s are all eigenvector for the action of h. Okay. Not only that, what is the eigenvalue? With the eigenvalue m minus 2 i. Okay. Note that this i is actually ranging from 0 to m. So, that means when you put 0 here, it, it is gives me m. So, the eigenvalues are starting from m and then goes to m minus 2 and then all the way it goes to minus m plus 2 and then minus m. Okay. So, these are all the eigenvalues. For example, w0 is the eigenvalue corresponding to m and then w1 corresponding to the eigenvalue m minus 2. So, these are all the h eigenvalues and these are all the h eigenvectors. Since all these uh, eigenvalues are distinct, we can easily see that all the eigenspaces are one dimensional subspaces of uh, this uh, SM. So, then this is corresponding to m minus 1 and this corresponds to Wm. Now, uh, how the action of x and y uh, can be understood. So, x w i is going to give, give us m minus i plus 1 times w i minus 1. Okay. Similarly, y w i gives me i plus 1 times w i plus 1. So, now using this formula one can see that let us use different colors. So, now 
the x axis like let us say uh, x action let us try to understand. So, it pushes okay, if I take w y and then it actually pushes down uh, one, one script. Okay. Basically, if I apply uh, x on w 1 then it actually takes here. Okay. Similarly, on w 2 if I apply then it takes here so and so on. So, it is basically x pushes down indices by 1 and of course, up to multiple of uh, w i's okay, the, the multiple is not important because everything is one dimensional where that one dimensional space is pushed that is what we are seeing. So, when you apply uh, w i x on w i then it takes to w i minus 1 that is the important thing. Now, uh, let us see how the y action actually plays the role. So, if we take this uh, w i and apply w uh, y on that w i then it actually pushes this w i to w i plus 1. So, that means w i minus 1 is mapped to w i and then w i is mapped to w i plus 1 up of course, up to scalar. So, this is the y action. Okay. So, y actually pushes uh, up and then x is pushes down. Okay. And h what it does? h is actually all of them are eigen vectors. So, it actually just applies it as like a loop. Okay. So, this is the action of h. So, it maps to itself. Okay. So, this is how the SL2 action is actually understood on this uh, module SM. Now, using this uh, what one can conclude? Okay. One can immediately conclude that SM must be irreducible submodule. Okay. So, here is the climb. SM is indeed SL2 irreducible representation. Okay. So, first of all let us define some notions. Okay. So, here it is clear that uh, this W naught okay, when you apply X it is killed. Okay. So, note that H W naught is given by M W naught and X W naught is killed. Okay. And if you apply Y powers on W naught you are able to actually get back entire thing. Okay. The SM is indeed the span of Y power J W naught because Y W naught is indeed increases. Okay. Whenever apply y on w naught you will go to w 1 then if you apply y again you go to w 2 and so on. So, when you actually repeatedly apply y powers to the w naught again you can actually just apply from 0 to m minus 1 because y power sorry we need to apply up to m. So, you can also see that y power m plus 1 w naught. So, that is going to be multiple of w m plus 1. Okay. Every time you are actually increasing the index by 1. So, if you start with 0 and then go up to m you will go to w m and then m plus 1 you are going to go to w m plus 1. Okay. So, that is going to be just 0 because you can see that y w m is nothing but 0 which is multiple of m plus 1 w m plus 1 which is 0. Okay. So, now uh, any vector that satisfies this condition okay, that will be called what is called highest weight vector. Okay all the eigen vectors of h will be called weight vectors and the corresponding h eigen value will be called weight of that vector. Okay. So, let us make these definitions. So, definition. So, this is true for any SL2 module. Let us say v is 
SL2 module okay any eigen vector of h is called weight vector okay and suppose the weight is let's say v is the weight vector and weight is a so then a is called the weight of the weight vector v okay so a non zero vector w in capital v is called highest weight vector if whenever you apply h it is going to give you some weight so let's say some a times v for some a in c okay so let's say highest weight vector of weight a let's fix that a inside c so then we should have that hv equal to av and xv should be zero so we will see that uh, we will see later that why it is called highest weight vector because xv is being killed okay the weight of this uh, uh, by applying the sl2 action on v we will not be able to get weight vectors which has weight more than a okay so this is actually something that we are going to see okay so basically what i'm going to show so this is the fact which will be proved later so the weight of this sl2 module generated by v okay because i have defined already weight what is weight okay if i take a h eigen vector the corresponding eigen value will be called weight so one can actually talk about weights of all this uh, sl2 uh, module generated by v so that will be the h weights of this module then one can prove if this vector has weight a then this will be contained in like a minus z plus okay this is by definition a minus r r greater than equal to 0 okay so that is why we call this vector v is the highest weight vector of weight a because this is uh, there is the total order on this a minus z plus a is indeed the largest element in this a minus z plus so we will we will actually see that later but anyway let's get back to our example so what we want to do uh, we want to prove that uh, this sm is indeed irreducible representation so to prove this uh, we need to see the following fact okay let us start with some sub module v of this s so this proof indeed will go through for any abstract irreducible module so we have to pay attention to this proof so let's start with v being a non zero module inside sm note that h is diagonalizable operator diagonalizable operator acting on sm okay because sm is direct sum of these eigen spaces so yes h is diagonalizable so now if you have any diagonalizable operator if you restrict that to any uh, invariant subspace that will be again diagonalizable so h restricted to v is also diagonalizable in particularly v can be written as direct sum of eigen spaces so direct sum of h eigen spaces indeed this is direct sum of weight vectors okay so since h has the eigen value coming from m etc okay m minus 2 etc minus m plus 2 m so this is will be called string of 
h weights okay this is indeed string because it's unbroken and starts from m and then goes all the way to minus m okay so string of h weights so indeed if v is direct sum of h eigen space and v is non zero then we will be able to find a vector v inside v and that vector will have weight of that v will be some m minus 2 m okay for some i for some i belongs to 0 to m so now let let's look at that v so then the space spanned by this v has to be exactly space spanned by wi because they are one dimensional spaces the eigen space corresponding to m minus 2i is one dimensional so this has to be equal to this so that means uh, if i take uh, this space spanned by this this is going to be inside capital v now go back to our diagram you can see that so wi is going to locate somewhere here okay so then if i take this wi if i use for example the action of x so then the action of x is going to bring the thing down and if i use the action of y so it's going to actually increase it is going to increase the index okay so that means by repeatedly applying x and y we will be able to reach other wj's okay so by applying x on wi we will we will actually again we will get some scalar multiple of scalar multiple of w i minus 1 similarly by applying y we will get scalar multiple of again non zero scalar multiple that is more important okay non zero scalar multiple of w i plus 1 that is in v now by repeating this we get that so by applying various powers okay by applying various powers of x and y we get all wj inside capital v that shows that sm is subset of v that shows that sm equal to v okay so this proves that uh, uh, indeed the module that we have constructed is irreducible module okay and note that there exists some vector up to scalar multiple such that the h eigen value of that or the h weight weight of that is m and m is the largest weight among all the weights okay the weights of this sm which is all the eigen h eigen values okay weights of this sm is given by this string m m minus 2 etc minus m plus 2 minus m and m is the largest weight or maximum weight okay so in particularly this w naught is the highest weight vector and it is unique up to actually constant multiple okay so it is indeed exercise i will leave it to you w naught is the only highest weight vector of course up to scalar multiple inside sm that means if you have another vector v which has uh, let us say highest weight a then this v has to be multiple of w naught and that a must be m okay so what we need to prove so you need to prove that if v is inside sm which is hv equal to some av 
and x v equal to 0, then that implies a equal to m and v is inside the span of w naught. Okay, this is the thing one needs to prove. To say that it is the only highest weight vector up to scalar multiple. Okay, this gives actually for any given non-negative integer m. So you have this uh, Sm, which is actually irreducible module. Okay, given m in Z plus, we have this Sm, so which is SL2 irreducible module. And we will prove that this correspondence is indeed one to one correspondence between Z plus and the isomorphism subclasses of irreducible, finite dimensional irreducible SL2 modules. So, our main theorem, so let me state it here. So, this map call it phi, phi is from Z plus to the set of all isomorphism classes of SL2 representations of finite dimensional irreducible SL2 representations, we have this one to one correspondence. The map is given by just M goes to this SL. So, this is how we denote the isomorphism class corresponding to SL. Okay, so, this is the indeed main theorem uh, in the theory of uh, SL2 representation theory, finite dimensional uh, theory of SL2 representation theory. So, then we have this. Uh, actually uh, the theorem of while okay so here is another theorem so let's call this theorem 1 and then this is theorem 2 so this is while's complete reducibility so that says any finite dimensional sl2 representation is completely reducible so completely reducible so, that means, uh, as a color corollary like any uh, any representation of uh, finite dimensional representation of SL2 can be written as direct sum of these SMs. Okay. As a corollary, if V is SL2 finite dimensional representation, then there exists let us call it K1 etcetera some KR positive integers such that okay, and m1 etcetera mr which are non-negative integers such that v is indeed isomorphic to s m1 direct sum k1 direct sum s m2 direct sum k2 direct sum etcetera direct sum S M R K R. Okay. So, these are all the only finite dimensional representation that you can get it from get it for SL2 representations. So, uh, sometimes actually uh, uh, people use uh, V of M to denote uh, this S M okay, up to isomorphism actually they are isomorphic. So, this V of M indeed uh, constructed using uh, some abstract approach of uh, representation theory, but anyway, so this is also used for used for denoting irreducible SL2 representation corresponding to the non-negative integer m. Okay. So, this is what actually for example, Humphreys uses or Anderson uses. Okay. So, this is used in Humphreys, even Anderson etcetera. Okay. We will also use this notation 
in, in coming classes. Okay, so these are all the main theorems uh, that one needs to prove for in the SL2 representation theory uh, and uh, we will actually uh, prove these theorems uh, in the next classes. Okay, first uh, we will actually classify all the finite dimensional uh, uh, irreducible representation, SL2 representations and then later uh, we will prove actually uh, the complete reducibility for SL2. Actually the proof that I am going to give for SL2, uh, complete reducibility of SL2 that will may not actually uh, uh, go through completely like one may not be able to generalize it as it is to the general SLN or uh, finite dimensional simple algebras. Uh, but, uh, but to get uh, more closer look at SL2 representations, uh, I, I want to actually uh, give this proof. Okay. So, that is going to tell you like how one can in general approach uh, representation theory. Okay. So, I will stop here and we will continue with the SL2 representation theory in the next class. Thank you.